Yes, let's try again. I didn't need to stop the video. It's very hot again. This is 30 degrees hot. And this heating makes me very sleepy and my computer is crashing. But, but I cannot just stop my, my, my life because it's too hot. I uh, like to read some more. But maybe my computer will crash. I need a minute. I like to read this. It's got to page four, I think. Yes, let's read from uh, page four. January 1881, the government launched administrative reforms and established the Tibongi Kinyuaman Office for Extraordinary State Affairs, which was modeled on Chinese administrative structures. 15. Under this overarching organization, 12 Sao agencies were created. 15. In 1881, a technical mission was sent to Japan to survey its modernized facilities. 16. Officials traveled all over Japan inspecting administrative, military, educational, and industrial facilities. 16. In October, another small group went to Tianjin to study modern weapons manufacturing, and Chinese technicians were invited to manufacture weapons in Seoul. Additionally, as part of their plan to modernize the country, the Koreans had invited the Japanese military attached Lieutenant Hirimoto Reese to serve as an advisor in creating a modern army. 17. A new military formation called the Piljigan, Special Skills Force, was established, in which 8,200 young men, 18, of the aristocracy were to be given Japanese military training. 19. The following year, in January 1882, the government also reorganized the existing five army garrison structure into the Muying, Palace Guards Garrison, and Thechang Jin, Capital Guards Garrison. 15. Japanese insecurities over Korea. During the 1880s, discussions in Japan about national security focused on the issue of Korean reform. The political discourse over the two were interlinked. As the German military advisor Major Jacob Meckel stated, Korea was a dagger pointed at the heart of Japan. 20. What made Korea of strategic concern was not merely its proximity to Japan but its inability to defend itself against outsiders. If Korea were truly independent, it posed no strategic problem to Japan's national security. But if the country remained undeveloped it would remain weak and consequently would be inviting prey for foreign domination. 21. The political consensus in Japan was that Korean independence lay, as it had been for Meiji Japan, through the importation of civilization from the West. 20. Korea required a program of self-strengthening like the post-restoration reforms that were enacted in Japan. 21. The Japanese interest in the reform of Korea was not purely altruistic. Not only would these reforms enable Korea to resist foreign intrusion, which was in Japan's direct interest, but through being a conduit of change they would also have opportunity to play a larger role on the peninsula. 20. To Meiji leaders, the issue was not whether Korea should be reformed but how these reforms might be implemented. There was a choice of adopting a passive role which required the cultivation of reformist elements within Korean society and rendering them assistance whenever 
possible, or adopting a more aggressive policy, actively interfering in Korean politics to assure that reform took place. 22. Many Japanese advocates of Korean reform swung between these two positions. Japan in the early 1880s was weak, as a result of internal peasant uprisings and samurai rebellions during the previous decade. The country was also struggling financially, with inflation as a result of these internal factors. Subsequently, the Meiji government adopted a passive policy, encouraging the Korean court to follow the Japanese model but offering little concrete assistance except for the dispatch of the small military mission headed by Lieutenant Hiromoto Rizo to train the Pyojigun. 22. What worried the Japanese was the Chinese who had loosened their hold over Korea in 1876 when the Japanese succeeded in establishing a legal basis for Korean independence by ending its tributary status. 23. Chinese actions appeared to be thwarting the forces of reform in Korea and reasserting their influence over the country. 23. 1882 crisis with black print depicting the flight of the Japanese legation in 1882 in 1882, the Korean peninsula experienced a severe drought which led to food shortages causing much hardship and discord among the population. Korea was on the verge of bankruptcy, even falling months behind on military pay, causing deep resentment among soldiers. There was also resentment towards the Piljigun on the part of the soldiers of the regular Korean army, as the formation was better equipped and treated. 17. Additionally, more than 1,000 soldiers had been discharged in the process of overhauling farming, most of them were either old or disabled, and the rest had not been given the pay in rice for 13 months. 19. In June of that year, King Gahong, being informed of the situation, ordered that a month's allowance of rice be given to the soldiers. 19. He directed Min Jae-yong Ho, the overseer of government finances and Queen Min's nephew, 24, to handle the matter. Min in turn handed the matter over to his steward who salty good rice he had been given and used the money to buy millet which he mixed with sand and bran. 19. As a result, the rice became rotten and inedible. The distribution of the alleged rice infuriated the soldiers. On the 23rd of July, a military mutiny and riot broke out in Seoul. Enraged soldiers headed for the residence of Min Jae-yong Ho, who they had suspected of having swindled them out of their rice. 19. Min, on hearing word of the revolt, ordered the police to arrest some of the ringleaders and announced that they would be executed the next morning. He had assumed that this would serve as a warning to the other agitators. However, after learning what had transpired the rioters broke into Min's house to take vengeance, as he was not at his residence the rioters vented their frustrations by destroying his furniture and other possessions. 19. The rioters then moved on to an armory from which they stole weapons and ammunition, and then headed for the prison. After the powering the guards, they released not only the men who had been arrested that day by Min Jae-yong Ho but also many political prisoners as well. 19. Min then summoned the army to quell the rebellion but it had become too late to suppress the mutiny. The original body of mutineers had been swelled by the poor and disaffected citizenry of the city, as a result the revolt had assumed major proportions. 19. The rioters now turned their attention to the Japanese. One group headed to Lieutenant Hirimoto's quarters and killed him. 19. Another group, some 3,000 strong, headed for the Japanese negation, where Hanabusa Yoshitada, the minister to Korea, and 27 members of the legation resided. 19. The mob surrounded the legation, shouting its intention of killing all the Japanese inside. 19. Hanabusa gave orders to burn the legation and important documents were set on fire. As the flames quickly spread, the members of the legation escaped through a rear gate, where they fled to the harbor and boarded a boat which took them down the Han River to Kimalpo. Taking refuge with the Incheon Commandant, 
they were again forced to flee after word arrived of the events in Seoul and the attitude of their hosts changed. They escaped to the harbor during heavy rain and were pursued by Korean soldiers. Six Japanese were killed, while another five were seriously wounded. 19. The survivors carrying the wounded then boarded a small boat and headed for the open sea where three days later they were rescued by a British survey ship, HMS Flying Fish, 25, which took them to Nagasaki. The following day, after the attack on the Japanese negation, the rioters forced their way into the royal palace where they found and killed Min Jiang Ho, as well as a dozen other high-ranking officers. 25. They also searched for Queen Min. The Queen narrowly escaped, however, dressed as an ordinary lady of the court and was carried on the back of a faithful guard who claimed she was his sister. 25. The day Wang Yun used the incident to reassert his power. The Chinese then deployed about 4,500 troops to Korea, under General Wu Changqing, which effectively regained control and quelled the rebellion. 26. In response, the Japanese also sent four warships and a battalion of troops to Seoul to safeguard Japanese interests and demand reparations. However, Tensions subsided with the Treaty of Kinalpo, signed on the evening of the 30th of August, 1882. The agreement specified that the Korean conspirators would be punished and 50,000 yen would be paid to the families of slain Japanese. The Japanese government would also receive 500,000 yen, a formal apology, and permission to station troops at their diplomatic legation in Seoul. In the aftermath of rebellion. The day Wang Yun was accused of fomenting the rebellion and its violence, and was arrested with Chinese and taken to Tianjin. 27. He was later carried off to a town about 60 miles southwest of Beijing, where for three years he was confined to one room and kept under strict surveillance. 28. Reassertion of Chinese influence. After the IMO incident, early reform efforts in Korea suffered a major setback. 29. In the aftermath of the incident, the Chinese asserted their influence over the peninsula, where they began to interfere in Korean internal affairs directly. 29. After stationing troops at strategic points in the capital Seoul, the Chinese undertook several initiatives to gain significant influence over the Korean government. 30. The Qin dispatched two special advisors on foreign affairs representing Chinese. Interests to Korea, the German Paul Jorg von Mollendorf, a close confidant of Li Hongzhang, and the Chinese diplomat Ma Jianzhong. 31. A staff of Chinese officer Sul Su took over the training of the army, providing the Koreans with 1,000 rifles, two cannons, and 10,000 rounds of ammunition. 32. Furthermore, the Qin Yuniong, Capital Guards Command, a new Korean military formation, was created and trained along Chinese lines by Yuan Shikai. 31. In October, the two countries signed a treaty stipulating that Korea was dependent on China and granted Chinese merchants the right to conduct overland and maritime business freely within its borders. It also gave the Chinese advantages over the Japanese and Westerners and granted them unilateral extraterritoriality privileges in civil and criminal cases. 32. Under the treaty, the number of Chinese merchants and traders significantly increased, a severe blow to Korean merchants. 31. Although it allowed Koreans reciprocally to trade in Beijing. The agreement was not a treaty but was in effect issued as a regulation for a vassal. 29. Additionally during the following year, the Chinese supervised the creation of a Korean Maritime Customs Service, headed by von Mollendorf. 29. Korea was reduced to a semi-colonial tributary state of China with King Gehong unable to appoint diplomats without Chinese approval. 31 and with troops stationed in the country to protect Chinese interests. NB1, Factional Rivalry and Ascendancy of the Min Clan During the 1880s two rival factions emerged in Korea. 
One was a small group of reformers that had centered around the Gawadan Enlightenment Party, which had become frustrated at the limited scale and arbitrary pace of reforms. 29. The members who constituted the Enlightenment Party were well educated Koreans and most were from the Yangban class. 29. They were impressed with developments in Maiji Japan and were eager to emulate them. 29. Members included Kim o Kei Jiang, Pak Young Kyo, Hong Young Seek, Seo Brangman, and So J Pil. 33. The group was also relatively young. Pak Young Kyo came from a prestigious lineage related to the royal family and was 23. Hong was 29. Seo Brangman was 25. 